I am Rainer Schulte, the director of the Translation Center at the University of Texas at Dallas and also the editor of Translation Review. Today I am particularly interested in introducing a poet with whom I have lived for several decades. He is without doubt the greatest innovator of poetic thinking in the 19th century, Stéphane Mallarmé. He was a poet who was admired and also many times he was not too popular with the various other writers and artists of his century. Mallarmé, without doubt, is the innovator of poetic thinking in the 19th century and almost every poet thereafter has been influenced by his thinking, by his writing, and also by the innovation of imagination in the creation of images, words, and analogies. Mallarmé is perhaps not the first one to begin to think in that direction. He knew very well Charles Baudelaire, who wrote the collection of poems called The Flowers of Evil. And as we can see, The Flowers of Evil is not a very harmonic sentence and not a harmonic title of a collection of poetry. And it was Mallarmé who created the poem to interact every possible sensibility between the visual and the verbal and the musical. And this is his poem, Correspondance. Mallarmé was very much tuned into this and his innovation has to be seen very clearly in the fact that he no longer wants to please the audience. He doesn't want to please his reader. What is replaced is the harmony all of a sudden becomes dissonance. He is not interested in presenting solutions. He is interested in getting the reader involved in dissonant tones, in dissonant analogies, and in dissonant views of the world. Naturally, that cost him a great deal of attacks and at the same time an enormous amount of admiration. Many poets thereafter cannot be thought of without Mallarmé, T.S. Eliot, and Ungaretti and Ezra Pound, all of these poets are immediately related to the poetic thinking that all of a sudden Mallarmé, the innovator of poetic thinking, has introduced. What does it mean? It means that all of a sudden we are no longer interested in telling a story, but we are interested in engaging the reader in the movement of words, of metaphors, and images. And that is indeed the great innovation that Mallarmé has brought to the development of 19th and 20th century poetry. There are very few poets who have not been influenced by Stéphane Mallarmé. Well, in order to demonstrate what the innovation is that he actually has brought to the thinking, the interpretation, and also the enjoyment of poetry, I would like to refer to a poem that is entitled Saint. And the last line of that poem reads, Musicienne du silence, musician of silence. The original is obviously feminine that cannot be recreated in the translation because we also have we only have musician of silence, musicien du silence. That is a poem that should be known by everyone who wants to understand what has happened in the changes of poetic thinking in the 20th century. What actually is new? Very simply, what the change is that Mallarmé does not use to tell a story, but Mallarmé uses the words to see what kind of associations and analogies they suggest. 
In his poem, The Saint, is an excellent demo demonstration of what he planned to do. All the words in that poem are suggesting something that is old, starting with a saint. Then you have sandalwood, you have a viol, you have a mandor, and all of these instruments and the objects that he has chosen are suggesting some kind of oldness. And that is the change in the poetic thinking before we used words to describe objects, to describe situations. And in this case, it is not the description that counts, but actually the imagination of the reader to figure out what is the association of each word. And then the reader will find that in many cases, the associations of the words that Mallarmé has chosen in his poem, Saint, are indicating something similar. So he creates an atmosphere of oldness, but he is not describing oldness. What does that mean? That the reader has the freedom to figure out how he or she wants to enact the internal movement and associations of the poem and the word that Mallarmé has chosen, only to find out if he or she doesn't do that, then the poem doesn't come to live. The idea that uh, something like the Romantic poets did, that you could recreate and describe a rather uh, sentimental moment in somebody's life, is totally, totally unknown and not at all part of Mallarmé's thinking. As I said before, Mallarmé lives with the dissonance. Mallarmé wants to disorient the reader and not to become to entertain the reader. If for a moment I just uh, go outside of the written word, then I can say that you have somebody like Charles Ives at the beginning of the uh, 19th century, who uh, uh, was the innovator, uh, the unanswered question that later on became this very important title for Leonard Bernstein's The Unanswered Questions, the 13 lectures he gave at Harvard. All of this indicates that we are creating a new sensibility that was unknown before. Uh, Mallarmé couldn't, could, could not really want to pursue Lamartine or any one of the 19th century poets. He wanted to have a dissonant beginning. He wanted to make sure that the reader was confronted and not entertained. Now, naturally, a lot of readers object to that. And therefore, many of the people who started to react at the beginning to Mallarmé were to a certain extent even furious. They said, why, why do I have to read this? At the other hand, it was the admiration that Mallarmé received from his contemporaries and also of the beginning readers who were particularly interested in what he was doing that has carried him from the 19th century to the 20th century and even into the 21st century. One should also mention that both Baudelaire and Mallarmé and other poets of the 19th century became extremely attractive to composers. And several of Stéphane Mallarmé's poems and the longer poems have been set to music. The Afternoon of a Fawn, for example, has been set to the music by Debussy, a work of music that has made its way onto the international scene. So here again, we see that a poet like Mallarmé has to make sure that he, first of all, makes a separa separation between what there was before, and at the same time, he is hitting a nerve of a changing civilization, a changing culture that all of a sudden becomes attracted to dissonance and has problems with the continuous perpetuation of harmony. And so the saint is the ultimate incarnation of what he wanted to show. Where does all of this lead? 
It doesn't lead to a solution. It doesn't lead to a final comment on the civilization or the world. It leads to the musicienne du silence, that is, the celebration of the silence that then becomes a major undertone of the 20th century, not only of the thinking, but of the poetic thinking and poetic creations. Mm -hmm.